Good morning to you, Mark Set of HurricaneTrack.com. A little after 7 o'clock Eastern Time on Saturday, the, Oct- the October, Saturday, October the 7th, 2017. Nate, now a hurricane, as you well know. Top winds are 80 miles per hour and the pressure 987 moving north, northwest at 22 miles per hour. This is the next five days of Nate's life and the lives that it'll impact down here, hurricane warnings, storm surge warnings. At this point, you need to read the public advisory to really get a grasp on everything that's happening with Nate in terms of all of the watches and warnings, etc. And that is right here. Click this, check it out. You see the headline in there, still moving very rapidly. And at 22 miles an hour, that's really getting it. And it's not because of a big trough coming in and kicking it out either. It's just kind of coming around the backside of this ridge. Uh, but the public advisory has a lot of great information. And what I like to look for and what I point out from time to time are the information about the wind in here, um, the hurricane force winds, how far they extend out when it's a hurricane, etc. The pressure is in here, and then we get into the hazards affecting land. So right now the winds are 80 miles per hour and there is more strengthening that is forecast before it makes landfall. The hurricane force winds extend outward up to 35 miles from the center with tropical storm force winds 125 miles from the center and it's starting to get more consolidated as we'll look at them in a moment in the satellite presentation. Uh, wind obviously what most people focus on is wind, tropical storm and then hurricane conditions coming for portions of the hurricane warning area, the Louisiana and Mississippi, and possibly the Alabama coastline throughout Saturday and into Saturday night. But it is the storm surge that I am the most concerned about for people. And as you can see, Morgan City, Louisiana, to the mouth of the Mississippi, four to six feet. The mouth of the Mississippi River to the Alabama-Florida border, five to nine feet. That is nothing to mess around with. That can put your car completely underwater. There are a lot of people still down here uh, for the weekend, and they don't necessarily know that a hurricane has formed overnight. You know, they went to bed, and maybe they've been out having a good time, and they're going to get up late on Saturday. Um, it's going to be a big problem, uh, definitely. So this storm surge here, five to nine feet, that's definitely life-threatening. Alabama border to the Okaloosa-Walton County line, four to six. I mean, you get the idea. In here, the storm surge threat from Nate is very real. Now, that's going to all depend on where it comes ashore. The uh, east of the landfall location is where the surge in the area of onshore flow is typically the highest. And, uh, of course, you're going to have destructive waves on top of that as well. You can tell that I'm tired. So looking at the satellite presentation this early morning, much better organized than it was yesterday, that's for sure. Luckily, it's not a classic-looking hurricane, but it's definitely got some outflow going on. A uh, big band trying to set up here over to the east, uh, crossing over Cuba, and it's moving over very warm and very deep water. The NOAA research planes have been dropping these oceanic probes that are... Uh, giving us real readings of not only the surface temperature of the ocean, but how far down that warm water extends, what we call the upper ocean heat content. You hear me talk about that a lot. And it's coming into play now because Nate has strengthened and could strengthen a little bit more as it comes up here and then eventually makes landfall somewhere, presumably along the Mississippi coast, maybe clipping extreme southeast Louisiana, late today and tonight. So what advice can I give you? I need to talk about how large this is overall. It's not the biggest hurricane ever, but it's not a dot on the map. All right, It's not just a center, and if you're near the eye, that's the worst part, the eye wall, the core. You know, This has effects still extending all the way down into Central America, coming across Cuba that is nowhere near the center where the 80-mile-per-hour winds are. So all of this area through Florida here and into Louisiana and all points in between and then into the deep south and eventually up into the Appalachians are going to feel the impacts from Nate. And in fact, we can look at that here on the National Hurricane Center homepage. A lot of important information in this box that I've just drawn, but this 
is the rainfall potential that I want to talk about because over the next couple of days, uh, this could be a big, big problem for the inland areas. You see a couple of bullseyes area uh, here up to 10 inches. And then again here in western North Carolina and parts of Tennessee, anywhere from 4 to 6. Uh, and then even 6 to 10 inches in isolated areas. So this is not just a coastal issue, okay? And anywhere along to the right of the track, the possibility of severe weather and maybe even tornadoes. So what you're going to need to do throughout the rest of the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, you need to pay attention to the track of this. Keep your smartphone handy for any alerts, you know a weather radio, social media, people that you trust. You need to follow that because this is a bigger deal than I think a lot of people thought it was going to be. Um, the storm surge inundation, I mean, this is a real big problem. Obviously, the southeast part of Louisiana has the title T-I-D-A-L, uh, you know, your inner tidal basins, this area is going to be flooded. You know, I think that's an obvious thing. It is to the right or to the east of where the center makes landfall, and that would include this area from Pensacola over to Gulf Shores, Dauphin Island up into Mobile, uh, maybe near Daphne, Alabama, um, just enormous amounts of water, uh, Spanish Fort, you name it, you know, point clear. These areas are going to have the potential for some significant inundation, and that holds true for the Mississippi coast as well. This map is going to change a little bit after every advisory because the map is generated based on the advisory information. But you get the idea, the yellows and oranges are your higher storm surge values, and we are talking anywhere from three to six feet, and in some cases, maybe even nine feet or higher uh, than that. So uh, if we scroll down and see the legend, the orange is greater than six feet. And then any reds that we see in here, if we zoom into the Mississippi coast, you can see that right up against the coastline. Obviously, you know, and then up here, you know, up some of these rivers and channels, I mean, after Katrina, hopefully we learned a lot about storm surge and how to respect it. Uh, you see over here along the east part of Biloxi, this point over here, some nine-foot values showing up over there. Uh, this is life-threatening, uh, and there are a lot of people, like I said. I mean, it's unbelievable how many people are down here still. We've had the cruising the coast and the music festival and it's the weekend, you know, people, <laughs> they want to come down and relax. And unfortunately, a hurricane here, uh, Nate, is going to have a big say-so in that. So the best way to find out what you can expect for your area, I want to kind of boil it down to this. You go in here and you put in Gulfport, Mississippi, or you zip code for that area, and you get to the landing page, and I've talked about this many, many times, that's your best friend right there. The hurricane, sorry, not the warning. <laughs> Try it here. The hurricane local statement. The hurricane warning is not your best friend. That's your biggest enemy. <laughs> but it, this gives you details, too, if you were to click on it. But I want you to click on this right here. The hurricane local statement. That's what has the information that's tailored for your area and that will help you understand what's going to happen, not quite down to your front yard, but... It's very thorough, and it gives you an overview, the impacts of the wind, the surge, you know, tornado threats, and this is written by people that live in your area. This is very extensive, too, uh, so, you know, some of it might be overwhelming, but if you want to know the details, this is it. Finally, as I wrap things up here, the radar, uh, not quite lit up yet for the Mississippi and Alabama coast, but it's certainly starting to happen for southern Louisiana, southeast Louisiana, and this will fill in. There's that band coming from Cuba. Uh, pretty amazing. Huge influence this hurricane has. Again, this area through here, probably to the east of where uh, Nate makes landfall, maybe something like this is the track, and this would be the direction of movement. This is the area that I'm most concerned about for storm surge. To the right, to the east of where this makes landfall, Late tonight, 12, 1 a.m., something like that. So listen, I've been working all night to set out cameras. 
They are uh, currently feeding into our app, Hurricane Impact. That's available on the App Store and on Google Play. Later in the day, I will tweet these so that people on PCs and who just don't have a way to use the app or purchase the app, I don't want to just force people to have to buy the app, but that is how we help generate revenue. And so, for now, they're available in the app. Later in the day, I mean, it's dark. You really can't see anything anyway. Uh, but later in the day, I will tweet the links a couple of times just to make sure people do have access to them. And I will be playing the cameras rotating through all four of them on the YouTube channel that we have. All right? So you can follow me on YouTube. Everything is at Hurricane Track. Twitter, at Hurricane Track, except for the app. The app is called Hurricane Impact. Whew, man, we have covered a lot. I'm going to get a, a few hours of sleep. I'm going to get up, and we're going to do another video discussion, and we're going to talk about the landfall, which will be coming up six to eight hours after I uh, wake up. And the most important part of all, at least for our project, the potential that we launch the hurricane weather balloon, the hurricane research balloon, Herbie, uh, we really would like to be able to do that. So I must get about six hours of sleep to have the wits about me and the energy and the brain power to handle such a monumental event. Um, so I'm going to go get some shut-eye. You guys stay safe That if you're down here. I think I've given you enough tools so you can figure out what's what. Uh, and we shall see what happens. Hopefully when I wake up, Nate won't be considerably stronger. But if it is, we will certainly be ready for it. All right. All right. Well, that's it from me. I am Mark Sutta. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm going to go get some much-needed rest. And I'll talk to you later in the day here on Saturday.